Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to stream that. Uh, look, my, my bike is small, but my bike is small. Okay, so. 500. Uh, five, let's call it 500. And then 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. So that's, that's basically the Yoma 68 project in a nutshell. Over a long period of time of, two, of, of, of uh, say, five to ten years, uh, if you buy uh, $500 laptops, one, two, three, four, five, the last four end up in landfill. <laughs> Whereas if you do this project, this type of thing, you buy one base station, you buy a, $30, a base Yoma 68 laptop housing, $30 card, year zero, Next year, $30 card sort of thing. And these end up in an ecosystem where this is now in a data center and with lots of little computer cards like the Raspberry Pi Cola hosting. And the guy who buys them from you makes three euros a month and, ke and keeps them out of landfill. <laughs> um, the, second, the second way, so that's the one of where you got... Um, uh, uh, multiple cards because you can upgrade continuously multiple cards into one housing and the other way is you have a laptop and you have a tablet and you have a desktop PC and whatever else it is that you want to do a micro desktop all in one PC with the keyboard hanging off of there and you have one card that goes into every single one of those devices now you save money you save yourself if you've got two devices you save 40% the cost of um, buying one tablet and one laptop and you no longer have the problems of your data being incompatible with the operating system on the here and here because this is running Windows, this is running uh, iOS, this is running, your smart tablet is running Android, whatever and it doesn't happen to have the same capability or capacity therefore it doesn't work. Instead of memory card being used to transfer the data, you take the computer card, the whole computer, and transfer everything, applications and data, and you get consistency. And also, another big advantage is um, you can try in the shop. You can say, oh, um, uh, I'm not sure if I want to buy your card, your new card with the super duper processor, with the blah, 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 blah. Can I please try it? <laughs> you unplug your computer card and plug in the new one inside the shop and test it out and try it out on your device and see if you like it. So those are the basic advantages of the modular computing approach which Intel copied. <laughs> World's first computer card initiative by Intel. Woo! Intel Compute Card 2006 CES. Loads of distributors so excited and I'm going that I'm looking at what they're writing on the internet and it's like um oh we are so excited to be working with uh, Intel on the our little uh, micro desktop thing where people can upgrade their computers like you quoted that out of my 2015 white paper ah <laughs> uh, uh, prior art man Prior art, not from me, but from ICE computers in Taiwan, 2000, 2010, who, yeah, they've got patterns. Oh, but the actual concept of modular computers goes back to a 1983 expired patent where somebody put a computer, including the LCD, on a PCMCA form factor credit card size computer. <laughs> so, um, you got patterns, screw you. <laughs> Sorry, anybody who's offended by that sort of thing. Um, I'm not, I don't care. Um, so, um, Simon Sinek, I apologize for that quick introduction there, but I just wanted to get my breath back from being um, a bit late. Um, Simon Sinek says, Simon says, um, that you should do uh, a talk by explaining why, how, what. Not what, how, why. Um, the one that um, is incredibly funny is, um, he said, uh, Martin Luther King did not give a speech, I have a plan. 
um, which is the what. He had a, a dream about why. Why I am doing this is because I am fed up with de manufacturers making devices which end up in landfill, which are designed for obsolescence, designed for manufacture, not repair, and designed for to provide the manufacturer with the right to shut down your entire device remotely. As happened when Google bought a company that provided an always-on home smart management system. Within 18 months, they decided that they didn't want anybody to use it anymore. They wanted people to buy the Google devices, so they remotely shut the, down the device, completely bricking it, claiming that it was out of warranty. So this kind of thing I consider to be highly unethical and uh, environmentally incredibly irresponsible of the manufacturers. Unfortunately, because we do not have any choice, we, in order to connect with other people and to achieve the kind of um, worldwide global um, uh, 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 connectivity that we know has beneficial uh, 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 effects. Unfortunately, we are required to commit to these companies for, and, and buy their devices. Now, if you uh, people here are technologically aware enough to be able to reprogram and repurpose your devices to the extent, extreme extent, of spending two years reverse engineering something just to be able to keep it done and around for another two to three to five years. I know that a lot of you have a ten-year-old ThinkPads. Um, there's, I've seen people with the Sony Veos, the ones with the Pulse Flow chipsets. I've seen Toshiba Librettos, and, and it's amazing. I'm so impressed and delighted with what you guys are, ach are achieving. I, what I want to do is to get, empower the people who cannot, do not have the same skill set as you do, to uh, be able to achieve the same result. Um, it's the same end result. Um, so, how I'm doing that, same point, what, why, how, how I am doing that is by splitting the design into a passive I.O. board and a modular small form factor computer. And when you, when you, so you, and that way you can upgrade and share and do all the benefits that are described in the 2050 rhombus, uh, Google keyword search for people watching here and, and anybody who wants to see it, rhombus tech, eco computing, white paper, an option you can put to 2015, but that will give you the search keywords that you need to find the uh, white paper and find out a comprehensive 12,000 word essay on, um, on um, all of the benefits for all of the different uh, perspectives which are involved in the chain behind mass volume uh, computing uh, uh, manufacturing. Fantastic, I've got somebody wearing the t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yes. Compute like nobody's watching, because they now they can't. Yes, straight out of um, 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 uh, the thing. We do a bit of a piss take of um, uh, Edward Snowden's um, thing. Um, so yeah, very good. Thank you very much for bringing that. That's real. That's really uh, fantastic to see. Um, now. Um, so that, that's basically how and the what. Now, the status, um, the talk is um, about the update. So I've done a very brief bit about how, uh, why, how, um, and what I'm doing. Um, uh, the, ah, the, the updates are supposed to be my opportunity to communicate with you um, about um, what I'm doing and to prevent, pre prevent, present, you, prevent you with the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> present you with the opportunity to um, give me some advice and feedback and also to reassure you that I am actually doing my absolute best in combination with your input and feedback and advice. So it is very, please, if you are um, uh, following this project, please um, do um, uh, uh, either sign up for the netbook, mailing, ARM netbook mailing list, the ineptly named ARM netbook mailing list, um, uh, or on the crowd supply updates, just so you can keep in touch um, and keep in, informed about what's do, uh, going on. I appreciate they're quite long, but it is a very good reason for that. And it is a documentation of the project so that people who are doing another project sometime in the future can see 
what, what I did, why I did it, and what the result of that decision was. And the reason for that, the, why I am committed to doing that, is because I learned from the Open Moco and the Open Pandora, and da, 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 which in turn documented their projects in a similar fashion. So it's not just about me. It's not even about what the thing. You may think, oh my God, he's written a 5,000 word essay as an update. Um, um, it's for people who, uh, in the future, who will ha have, uh, who have the time to, and have a specific problem, which is exactly documented in these updates as how we went about solving it. So, uh, solving the problem, documenting and solving the problem. So, um, it, it may go over some people's heads, but that's why I'm doing it. Now, um, uh, the issues which I've encountered so far, <laughs> Starting with um, <laughs> the first, the first card. All right, this is back to 2010. I told the guys who spent ten thousand dollars. All right, to get I said to these guys, please make me a card. When please look up the the documentation on the schematic to. Um, uh, uh, to make the card fit inside a 54 by, what is it, 86? 86, 90, whatever, I can't remember the thing. I'm supposed to know these numbers in my head. Whoops. Anybody know dimensions of PCMCA? I know the 54 one. Okay, let's call it, eight, uh, let's call it 86, okay, whatever it is. I was saying, didn't follow my instructions and made the PCB 54 by 86 on the external dimensions. Fortunately, as a junior design engineer, on, there was a power management chip where there was a line, there was a pad here, and he didn't run the design rules check before sending it off to the Gerbers, off to the factory, and there was a short circuit between 3.3 volt and ground. Um, the guy was so embarrassed, he wrote rum reply saying, I'm terribly embarrassed, and if he'd been Japanese, he would have gone, eh, with the sword, you know, sort of committed Harry Kiri. Um, uh, but luckily he was Chinese, and he just lost face rather than his, his life. Um, his manager didn't tell him to go and jump off the uh, uh, thing. Um, so they offered us access to uh, their uh, top engineer who made the most beautiful... DDR3 layout I have ever seen in my life. It, the, the, EM, uh, 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 the EM interference from these tracks is, will be zero if there is everything. It was a fantastic, it was a work of art. I, it was $5,000, but it did actually work. But um, on it, it had, um, uh, um, it, this was the version of the standard which had, um, Ethernet on it, gigabit Ethernet. And unfortunately, by about 2013, we had to change the, it to USB 3. Okay, so um, Ethernet out. Um, it was also had SATA on it, so we took SATA out and put USB 2. But eventually, by about 2015, I changed it to USB 3 and USB 3 as well. So there's f 10 gigabit per second in dual lane of two USBs. Um, two USBs, thank you, there's 10 minutes left. Um, two USB 3s, which gives 10 gigabit per second tra data transfer speed when cards are available, which will do that kind of uh, uh, transfer rate. So um, this here, 5,000. This here, this version was $2,000. Here was another $2,000. There's basically two grand a time to get 10 samples made up. Okay, but at this point I decided to stop and I was just, I was not going to do, spend irresponsible amounts of money on doing um, uh, PCB designs and I would do it myself. Okay, so um, that's one other thing. So, um, to one seven. Now, throughout all of this we had TSS OP48 NAND chip up to about here. Okay, the TSS, the NAND, uh, the speed of the NAND chips that are available, because it is very hard-coded specific, the A20 processor can only 
a boot ROM, not the actual thing. Once you get beyond the boot ROM, it's fine. But the boot ROM can only look at certain combinations of uh, looks for brute force at, um, attack and brute force search for certain combinations of speeds, capacities, and block sizes, etc., etc., and error correction, ECC things. And by this time, 8 gigabyte NAND flash, TSSOP legacy NAND, was not, not slow enough, not fast enough, was not slow enough to be accessible by the A20. Now, even Nintendo Wii, they were caught out. Nintendo were caught out by this problem. And the reason why, in around this time, that they stopped mass producing the thing is because the Ginan chip wasn't available. Right? So it's not just me. Not even the buying power of Nintendo could, overco uh, could overcome the problems of uh, the mass produ production of um, the, the, the legacy NAND stopping. So that had to go. It's another $2,000 and interesting thing. The other one is the HDMI port. We are on to the fourth. One, two, three, four, five. Fourth. Uh, fingers. Uh, fourth HDMI port. The first one for an Amphenol was a um, very good one. It fitted perfectly. That went out of life. Um, then the reverse, reversed one, same manufacturer, that went end of life two years ago. Then the Molex one that we found, um, tested that out, oh, and couldn't get hold of it. That was a stupid mistake on my part, but they, I think. Finally, we've moved to one by Japanese a aerospace engineer, JAE, and I've bought 3,000 of them. I bought two reels. I said, that's it, I'm not doing this, um, thing, this thing again. I'm buying the reels right now. And the thing is, they're only 15 cents each, so it's okay. Monetary-wise, it's not breaking the bank. Um, so these kinds of things, but it's the reason for, that, for that, um, uh, those kinds of decisions is because it is such an unusual connector. Right? If it was a common part, if this was a single board computer, big one, I would be able to get top mount connectors, no problem. On the micro desktop, it's standard USB and standard blah, 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 and standard VGA. I can get those, no problem. There's 100 suppliers, different suppliers that can get exactly the same part. But these parts that I'm using, because it's mid-mount circuit board, it's very, very specialist parts. So cross fingers would be OK. Um, the other thing is the DDR3 RAM. <laughs> right. Not a fan, Apple. Um, uh, the um, huge demand, insatiable demand for Apple devices. I apologize to all people who are, in fact, Apple fans and actually appreciate their work. I mean, it's fantastic. But the demands being placed on the component suppliers has actually caused complete stocks in the whole of Shenzhen and Taiwan to fall plummet to zero for all, all DDR3 RAM chips. Every single embedded computer supplier that only maxes out at, at DDR3 is completely screwed. Hopefully, after Chinese New Year, we will bear the situation has got so bad that I think that all of the manufacturers have taken notice that their, their customers are screaming at them. <laughs> and all of their distributors are screaming at them because the distributors' customers are screaming at them, give us the f***ing DDR3 RAM! <laughs> um, uh, so um, the situation should improve after Chinese New Year once um, uh, all of these manufacturers are no longer um, uh, um, contractually required to supply Apple with insane quantities of DDR4 memory. Okay? So that's, um, that's it. How long have we got? Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Um, let's, um, I, li I like to do things of uh, handing people over questions, for clar particularly for clarification. If anybody's got any questions, feel free to, feel free to ask. Um, if not, I'll sort of find um, some other random things to talk about. Any questions? Uh, ideas. OK. All right. OK. So uh, what else should we talk about? Um, so we've gone on, let's a recap. We've gone over the how, why, and um, how, how uh, why, how, and where. 
um, why I'm doing this project and what I'm thinking, the benefits and the environmental blah, 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 things. I've described to you the, um, the history of um, the d decisions of, of, uh, that are uncomfortable decisions, including having to change the standard to suit um, a, uh, uh, a decade or two decade future uh, um, um, lifetime of the standard. Um, some un also uncomfortable decisions about having to remove components from the board um, because they've gone, these things have gone out of um, thing. This is all part of the course. Um, um, did anybody um, go to the component sourcing talk that I, I did yesterday? Yeah, you did. Cool, man. I apologise um, uh, for your vision-wise. You've got um, uh, 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 things. I, uh, did I read out the URLs of the websites that I was um, doing? Yeah, fantastic. Taobao.com, um, uh, panellook.com with one L, um, uh, AliExpress.com. You do have to log into that. Um, it's the only one that need, requires a login. Um, and of course, DigiKey, RS Online, and all those ones you can use. But you use a combination of those resources to find the components. So um, that's good. So um, anybody's interested in that, the talk will be is online, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so you'll be able to uh, review it. Um, what else can um, I think? Um, future products that I'm for, future designs. Bear in mind that I am the guardian of the OMA 68 standard. Under the rules of certification marks, I am not permitted to sell products. Okay? Um, if you are a developer, you can contact me and you can come over, the, over that line and work with me to reach people. Okay, and help me to write documentation, do kernel porting, do this, improvements, their patches, etc., etc. So that way I can get you access to a board um, early, but otherwise, unfortunately, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no. Um, uh, because I, can't, I really cannot cross that line of competing with businesses who might wish to sell, might wish to be the ones that sell you products. Um, so that explains in part some of the. Uh, a thing because also I've kept this project at the techie phase mailing list, not forum, yeah, um, because um, it, I wanted specifically to make it clear to people that this is not yet fully user ready, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, and that's very important so that the people, you know, if we've got a million people buying this right now, all of us, me included, would be totally overwhelmed. There would be complaints that OMA 68 is a failure, and the standard would be dead. All right? I would I think I'll be, with the past six years would be completely wasted. So there is a very deliberate reason why I am going steady, slowly, and a um, uh, uh, thing because um, I am thinking about planning for the future. It's about. It's like being the uh, the. Um, um, the, the technical director of WC3 standards uh, organization thing. You agree? It's like, you know, uh, um, thing, except I don't take bribes. Um, and um, I don't take um, um, uh, money um, which um, is claimed to be a sponsorship um, to um, oh, insert this DRM uh, thing into the WC3 standard. You know who you are, Tim. Um, um, so, yeah, so I put this thing. Yes, question. Uh, question. Yeah, yesterday, uh, just before or right before you, you talk on the supplier, supplier uh, the electronic component supplier, there was a talk about the Olimex project for doing an open source and PCAT based uh, laptop, which has some kind of same uh, goals uh, to have. If you want the system to be module based, you can, you can replace parts and so on. Have you be in touch with, uh, with them or you're aware of that project and, uh, because your board might be, could have, could have been the, the main CPU of, that, of, the, of this laptop also. Sorry. It's, a, it's okay. I have to be careful how I answer. The question yeah. was, why am I not collaborating with Olimex on this uh, project? I, I cannot publicly discuss it with you okay. for fear of um, uh, harming the reputation of the EOMA 68 project 
by having to publicly disclose to you some of the... I, no, I can't, I, can't, I can't talk about it. Okay, all right. Um, uh, I can talk to you privately about it. That's not a problem as long as you don't um, you know, start blogging about it, etc., etc. Um, yeah. You will, you will find... You, think, you, will see, you will see the consequences of Svetan's actions and decisions eventually. Okay. All right. Well, what's the timeline for the production? So you started the production of this. And right. What's um, the timeline of the, for the people that have crowdfunded you? Okay. Um, you right. Um, the answer really has to be when it's ready. It would have been fantastic to have been at the phase where I am now, where the production qu testing, pre production testing, was done, blah, 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 blah. blah. But the rules for crowdfunding are you must have a working prototype before you can go to the things. And I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I passed apologize. I did have a working prototype. It's just that the, um, the things that you deal with, with components going end of life and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, and, get, and gar getting guaranteed supply, you can't, you can't, it's not like software where you can release it and fix it afterwards. Hardware, one mistake, you've got a short circuit like those guys had here, the board won't even bolt up, it'll catch fire. Okay? It's very, hardware is very, very different. You have to get it right. Um, and here, it's even more complex. It's the software collaborates with the hardware. So I have safety issues um, to consider, which are in some parts are taken away in an extreme way of just if the current goes over a certain limit, the hardware, the board, the, the, um, the the system is permitted to just cut the power. No, no, no notification, nothing. Right? Overcurrent protection, it's cut in, it's in microseconds, bang, it's out. Your, your card um, uh, you know, is, is, um, is offline, um, no power. So um, these are the kinds of things that I have to think about and make sure I think. Now, to answer your question specifically, now that we have done the pre-production prototype, the PCBs are, have been done, Mike is now buying the components. He should have everything by about, about, about end of February, with the exception of the DDR3 RAM. <laughs> okay. We'll have to work out where to get the DDR RAM from. Now we're probably up to about March. Okay. Once he's made that, put that on and sent them to me, it'll take about me about three days to get to me wherever I am in the world. Um, I will test it. I will give him the green light and g say, go, buy 1,000, 1,000, 4,000, 5,000 components right now. Okay? He's already got the cash in the bank to do it. Okay? So from there, um, I w he will then be able to describe to me exactly what the expected schedule is of his factory. And that will be a formal process that will be easily predictable. So um, apart from hiccups and stuff like that, there will be no unknowns or unknowable unknowns. Is the a thing. You can't know what you don't know, what you didn't know that you didn't know in order to be a fix the thing that you didn't know. Yeah? That was the previous pitch situation. All of those things, apart from the King DDR3 RAM, blah, um, apart from that, are all fixed. Those are all in the past now. As long as none of the components go end of life. No! <sighs> Cross your fingers and everything else. Okay? Yeah? So maybe June, July. Plus the Yeah. Have you talked to the uh, Linux Shangxi team about porting um, parts of the kernel to the A20 processor for this board? Um, the question is, um, have I talked to the Linux Shangxi team about um, the uh, A20? Um, no, because you will find out why. Um, um, uh, the Shangxi team um, uh, did not consult me before moving to a Google group. Um, which um, I think they, they abandon the thing. Read between the lines here. They en masse moved from the resources that I was doing and from, from, from helping me and collaborating to um, SunXI, Linux SunXI Wiki, and to um, the Google Groups. Um, yeah? Yeah? Um, uh, so I, um, I can't talk to them. Right. Privately, I can send them email and they will maybe do something. But it turns out that actually the, um, 
uh, the, 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 there's two branches. The stable one that works 100%, known works 100% with all the hardware of this card and the thing is the 3.4.104 plus kernel. And unfortunately, there is stuff still missing from the hardware which would stop some of the capabilities of this card from even working. So it's like, why would you go to a mainline kernel when you can't actually connect stuff that is really important for the customers and for people to actually use? So when that is done, because it will work with everybody else's cards and computers and single boards, I will just be able to be able to cut over that and make a, make a, um, a release, and it will probably actually work with the Debian straight out of the thing. Um, but there is the... Um, do you know 96 boards and the Beagle boards problem? Yeah, of the shields. The shields have to actually have their own device tree, which you then have to patch in at runtime after you've booted and detected what the, cu what the shield actually is. And that is what the EEPROM is for in, on the housings. It's part of the EOM68 standard. It requires that there be an identification EEPROM on the housing, every single one of them, at a fixed known address on the I2C bus, which must not conflict with any other uh, device. So it's not X51 for the address to read that EEPROM. So it's part of the standard. You cannot put a, a, any device, any other device, on uh, address not X51 because it will um, be a problem. So being able to read that, we can then find out which device tree fragment for that board should be inserted into the kernel of the thing. And that, that is where I will need assistance from people, from volunteers, to help to write those things and also um, kick the uh, Linux mainline people to actually put the device tree patching, uh, dynamic patching system main, into mainline. Um, but again, it doesn't necessarily need the Linux Sun SI team to do that because it's a mainline thing that it can be handled by Lilaro, can and will be handled by the Lanaro team, the, um, the Beagle board team, the, the, the this and that thing. So it's an important thing for all of these boards, which, oh, incidentally happens to be useful for this. Yeah? So, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.